Welcome to e Know How. In this video, we would look at uh, what a CMOS inverter is and uh, how uh, what its digital operation is, and uh, how the W by L ratio of the CMOS inverter is chosen, and how you specify the strength of the CMOS inverter. So, a CMOS inverter, if you look at it in schematically, it's drawn like this, with an input and an output say I and O here and if you look at the the logic of this so if you have input and output here so I'll say I and if input it is 0 logic 0 output is logic 1 input is at logic 1 output is at 0 so how does this work or how is it constructed? That's what we would like to see here. So a CMOS inverter is constructed using a PMOS, a PMOS transistor and an NMOS transistor. So where the source of the PMOS transistor is tied to VDD or the supply voltage here, VDD and the N well is also tied to VDD the N well is also tied to VDD and the source of the NMOS is tied to ground which is the ground voltage and the P substrate or the bulk of the NMOS is also tied to the ground bulk this is the N well or the bulk of the PMOS so the drains of the PMOS and the NMOS are connected together the gates are connected together and the gate at the gates is the in and the drains is the output so now how does this work so when in is that when what we call 0 and 1 is basically 0 is ground in CMOS logic and 1 is VDD this voltage could be ground C0 volts, say VDD could be a 1 volt, say 1.2 volts, 1.5 volts, or 3 volts or 5 volts, doesn't matter, depends on the technology, the VDD varies. So the transistors are built for that particular technology. Say you have a technology that has 1.2 volt transistors. So the PMOS here, so I'll call it P, uh, MP is the PMOS transistor, MN is the NMOS, both are built with the one point, for 1 1.2 volt technology. And now let's look at it, how it works. So from a digital point of view, say, we will look at input and output. Say the input is initially 0 and it goes to VDD, VDD stays at VDD for a while and goes back to ground. So now how does the output change or vary for the CMOS inverter? So we are saying the input is here at the gates. So when the input is at ground, what it means is the VGS for the PMOS device, so VGS at this point, the VG, VSG, we call VSG because the source is at a higher potential, VSG for the PMOS is VDD. And then the VGS for the NMOS, this is a PMOS, so the VGS for the NMOS, the input is at ground, is zero. So which means the PMOS is on and NMOS is off. So 
you know that when the PMOS is on, it shots VDD to the output. So your output should be at VDD. So if you look at output, it would be at VDD, the output. And now, once the input goes from 0 to VDD, now let's look at what happens there. When in is VDD, VSG of PMOS becomes 0 and the VGS of the NMOS becomes VDD, which means the PMOS will be off. and the NMOS is on. So please look at the threshold voltage video for this. So PMOS is off and NMOS is on. Once the NMOS is on, it will shut the output to the source of NMOS which is ground. So the output has to be ground here when the, when the input goes high. But there is a transition period where both devices are partially on and so that transition usually would look like this. So the output would go down towards ground and then when you again transition the output would go back up to VDD. Now if you look at say the 50 say take the VDD over 2 point, the 50 percent point VDD over 2. So now if you look at the 50 percent point on the input and the 50 percent point on the output and if you look at say the distance, the time distance, this is time axis, this is time axis, the time distance between these two, that is the TD TD fall of the inverter, TD, the time delay for the inverter output to fall. And now if you look at the, the same thing on this side where you look at the 50% on uh, point on the falling edge to the 50% uh, point on the rising edge on the output. So this would be, this, this delay would be TD rise rise delay of the inverter and that depends on various things when we look at digital library characterization I will talk a little bit about that it will it'll depend on uh, what is the capacitance on the output and uh, what is the transition time at the input the transition time at the input so we will look at that later so but this is the basic operation of the CMOS inverter and now if you look at a little bit from the analog point of view say for example you want to see what the current is flows from the VDD to ground what is the current flowing usually there would be no current flowing when the output and input are steady only when the uh, input is changing and the output is changing there would be current flow so usually you will have some kind of leakage which is very like less than picoamps and then you will have a current flow when switching and then there will be a current flow again when switching back. So when the output uh, goes from uh, VDD to ground there is a current flow. This is I of T with respect to time here. So this is more of a, if you look at it from an analog point of view, but otherwise you know steady state is when the input is at ground output will be VDD and the uh, output uh, input is at VDD the output will be at ground that, that is the steady state that's how the CMOS inverter operates and now uh, like um, I think I have mentioned in one of my videos where if you look at the W by L ratios now now the larger the W by L ratios are so now say W by L ratio WP by L and WN by L. So why I said the L is common is because usually for any technology, say you take a 120 nanometer technology for example, L would be 120 nanometers. That is uh, for in the entire digital library 
all the cells would have an L of 120 nanometers. But the W and WP and WN can vary. And WN is usually less than WP in a, in a particular gate because what happens is there is the the mobility of electrons mu n is greater than mu p this is mobility of electrons mobility of electrons and holes mu n is electrons and uh, mu p is the mobility of holes so this is again a device physics thing where so what happens is usually for an inverter say you have L is 120 nanometers for the smallest inverter in your digital library which is say called 1x inverter or 0x inverter so you will have WN say for example say 360 nanometers or 0 0.36 micron and WP would be usually be higher say usually around say something like 520 nanometers or 0 0.52 micron and now for say for a 4x gate for example you would have these that the L would still be 120 nanometer but the WN would now be 360 multiplied by 4 and uh, WP would be 520 multiplied by 4 say approximately 1.4 microns and uh, say 2 microns so they scale accordingly so what now you saw that basically if you have a gate with a smaller w's so that's the smaller gate it can drive smaller capacitances and uh, the bigger gates uh, drive bigger capacitances but whenever the transition occurs the bigger gates would also consume larger currents say for example smaller gate is like this the bigger gate would have consumed larger current.